Welcome to the second half of our college. End of the regular season matching the Arizona Wildcats, the leader right now, and the UCLA Bruins who want to lead. I'm Keith Jackson along with Dick Vitale. And Dick, this game of all games perhaps in the Pac-10 may have championship overtones. Well, it definitely does. UCLA has to win on their own living room floor. And to do that, they have to shut down the perimeter people on Arizona. When Arizona has lost ball games this year, the perimeter people have not been productive. Well, they got a great run for it. If their perimeter people are hitting and shooting that jump shot, their big people become dominators. And if the Bruins get to running and gunning, lock the door. You're what? Pavilion on the campus of UCLA in Westwood, Los Angeles, California. The starting lineup for Arizona. The big people up front, very much a story, but as Dick said, may not determine the outcome of the game. For UCLA, this is a team uh, where young Derek Martin has emerged as a premier point guard. It's a team that loves to run, and their big people, the M boys, as they call them, will come outside and skin you alive. The M, &M guys, Tracy Murray and Don McLean, are as good as shooters in America in terms of playing on a perimeter for big people. The officials uh, have everybody ready. Richie Ballesteros is going to put it up. The big guys go for it, and Arizona wearing the dark controls it. Matt Othick, who could be a very key person in this whole structure today, handling the ball out in front for the Arizona Wildcats. When they played at Tucson last month, Arizona won 82-78, and UCLA rebounds the missed shot. Don McLean, the big man, brings it up. This is Martin for three, and it doesn't go. Brian William Williams is up high. Very aggressive after that rebound. Mulebach, who has played well all year, Othick missing off the front. Stokes inside the seven-footer. Got it. And Stokes getting a start, replacing Sean Rooks. Rooks will be coming off the bench. That's a foul on Matt Mulebach. Now, here's why this game means so much. Look at it. If Arizona should lose today, you're the top echelon of the Pac-10. All have four losses. It's amazing. Washington State, what a great story. Kelvin Sampson, ready for this? Last year, they were 1-17 and 17 in the league. Out of the corner. The Bruins can't get it. Watson, Matt, uh, Gerald Matkins uh, missing the shot, and down comes Mulebach with the ball. Matkins, one of the most courageous players in college basketball, fractured his pelvis. He's lucky to be walking. Unbelievable story and a moped accident right on campus. Williams is out at the top of the key. This is Othick. Very deliberate at this point, and this is Arizona's best bet right here. Man-to-man -man defense. Butler playing on Othick, and they're using Matkins on Chris Mills. Control the ball. Don't get into a run-and-gun game with UCLA. Lute Olsen has to be concerned. His team gets beat in their last outing against Southern Cal, playing on the road, unbeatable at home. 58 in a row. I think he's missed his one shot from the field that he has taken so far. This is Mulebach. He goes for three and gets it. He's been their most consistent player, very steady. He was five for five. Look at this up quick. That's NBA style, Mr. That's Jackson. It. You have got to get back. You have got to play defense or they'll just skin you alive. And they're getting better and better at it. Until Butler really got out in transition. That is big. Othick hitting a shot early in the game to give him confidence could have tremendous meaning before this day is done. McLean is fouled. And the foul is on Chris Mills. I think it's good news right now, really good news, 
when you talk about, look at that blowout, 80 to 58, Duke on Shaquille O'Neal, wow. Jimmy Herrick right now has to be concerned because Arizona's hitting the perimeter shot. Optic yep. and Muehlbach knocked both down from the perimeter. Yep. The element of confidence on the road is such a big, big thing. You talk about confidence. This guy has all the confidence in the world. He's been maligned a great deal about his attitude. A lot of people say he talks the trash game on the floor. He told me today, he says, Coach, I'm not doing any more talking. I'm going to let my play and do the talking. Well, he's also uh, taking some of the sharpness out of his elbows, too. Muehlbach handles in front. And look at here. And the big man off the top of the key. Stokes knocks one down. It's pretty nice when you can bring a guy like Stokes and insert him in your starting lineup. He has Rooks on the bench because he's not happy with the rebounding and defense of Sean Rooks. Murray. Rebound Brian Williams for Arizona. Williams had 15 rebounds in their last game against Southern Cal. Had a little hip problem about two weeks ago. McLean playing. I'd go right to Brian Williams against McLean. Well, they sag off. Martin comes inside as they try to go to Stokes, and Stokes gets a hand on it and loses it. Jimmy Herrick's brought a lot of stability to this program. He wants to be here. A lot of guys wanted this job. But I didn't want the job, but he was one guy that wanted it. Well, they finally, I think, found a man to succeed, John Wooden. Of course, there are a lot of people in between. McLean drives in, won't go, rebounds, knocked loose. Out of bounds, Bruin. The rap on McLean, Keith, was that he was a soft player, but he's a much more aggressive player. You see the temper right here now as he suddenly flares and flips the ball back. Triple threat position, here's the drive. Now look at a good offensive rebound. Nobody bodies him up. Stokes forgets the block out. Nice pass. Murray gives to Matkins. Count it down. Excellent vision by Tracy Murray. Finds Matkins, 6'4", very strong, big guard. I think that's Mills, second foul. It is. Penetration, drive the seam of the defense, Murray. Good no-look pass, all of the magic man. And then Matkins has the strength to lay it on a glass, kisses it on a glass, and gets the conversion. Gerald Matkins is strong. I mean, he's 6'4", he's up there around 190 pounds. Wayne Womack coming in, one of the best six men in basketball. A Dennis Eckersley kind of guy out of the pen. Well, at 16.55, Chris Mills with two fouls, you almost have to sit him down for a little while. Yeah, you definitely have to bring him out. You know, Mills has definitely been an inconsistent player. He's had some great, great moments winning the MVP like he did in that NIT. Coming out at halftime, they're having a feature on Chris Mills. Atkins makes it a three-point play. Womack has the ball taken away. Murray's a uh -oh. Yes, sir. Slam jam bam by Tracy Murray. It's now a one-point ball game, 10 to 9, and the crowd is in it. Full and court trap. Press. One, two, one, one, trap. Look for the reverse man, postman. Excellent way to break the pressure. Hit the post and hit the opposite side. Down the middle, Williams. Count it foul. Look at him, look at him. He says, in your face. He's talking. What intensity here, Keith. What intensity in this game. Brian Williams, Oh, great look, and there's Brian Williams. BW just slams that baby down. He's a California kid who decided to go to Maryland, left Maryland, and now playing for Arizona. And he goes with a three-point play, and he missed it off the back iron. The rebound to Martin. Derek runs him. McLean to Butler. Inside, Butler is fouled. They really feel that they found an excellent point guard in Derek Martin. They think he came of age against Pittsburgh where he had 15 assists. Up until that time, he played like a second guard. Derek's got outstanding talent, but his freshman year, he played the off guard with Pooh Richardson handling the ball. Williams had the foul. Murray, he traveled. Well, you know, uh, Martin would have had 18 or 19, except as he kept feeding his pals the ball, and they kept <laughs> putting up bricks. He missed a couple of layups. Jimmy Herrick got into a little controversy with Bill Frieda after the game. 
beating Southern Cal. We'll talk a little bit about that. Locking. Block. Butler got a piece of it. Matkins goes for three. No. Rebound. Out of bounds in Arizona ball. Timeout. 15.53 to go in the first half. And it's a three-point Arizona lead. Are you well denied. Here is Jack Aroot. Keith, when you talk about Pauley Pavilion, it has a tradition of its own. It's in its 26th year. And it was designed in part by the Wizard of Westwood, John Wooden, such a terrific head coach here at the UCLA. And they account for eight of the ten national championships. Here's one of the things that's so interesting. The student body is right down on the hardwood. And let me tell you, there have been only 40 losses here in Pauley Pavilion in 26 years. Two of those losses to the UCLA, I mean, to the Arizona Wildcats, 86 and 89. We're sitting right in front of those uh, students, and I mean, they are partisan. Brian Williams up and bangs it down to make it a five-point Arizona lead. He's really playing very aggressive. He came to the ball really strong. Good, quick move to the goal. Well, Brian Williams, uh, Chris Mills were two youngsters that went away. Uh, both were recruited heavily by UCLA. Inside, Butler, great move. He's a slashing, quick player. Arizona went to their matchup zone defense, a 1-1-3, and they recognize it and take advantage of the opening down on the baseline. Stokes, last time he came out to the top of the key, hit one. I would really go to Brian Williams because if there's a liability, Don McLean is not a strong defensive player. They take it away from Stokes. He can really shoot the stationary J. That ties the score at 14. Excellent transition game. Run to designated spots on the floor. Put the rock in the hands of your ball handler. Williams got a slide in the low post against McLean. They go to Stokes again. They leave him available, but he hasn't handled the ball well at all. Last two times they put it to him down low. He, they've taken it away from him. McLean and Williams really banging each other. He's got Williams. It was too deep under the basket. He didn't have a chance to take it up, and he traveled. Falling over the photographer. They didn't do an excellent job. Watch McLean trying to deny Williams the ball. Now see, he spins and pins. He's got him sealed if you reverse the ball. There's the angle. Poor pass to Brian Williams, but he had inside position. Bad pass cost him the basket. He's this a skill clean over the top. Air ball. Rebound. Muehlbach and McLean fight for it. That's the second time McLean has pursued his own shot and rebounded it. Derek Martin has it in and out. The two on two, Muehlbach, and Muehlbach has uh, got a ticky-tack foul called on Matkins. McLean is a skilled offensive player. Matkins is their best defensive player. He was assigned Chris Mills early in the game. You're going to get substitutes into the game now. Keith Owens is going to come in uh, for UCLA, and so is Sean Tarver. And Khalid Reeves will be coming into the ball game, number three right there for Arizona. He's the freshman from New York City, from Brooklyn. Reeves is an outstanding player who's going to have a tremendous career at Arizona from out of New York City, Christ the King High School, where he hooked up back there with Derek Phelps. Here comes Rooks now. You're looking for offense. He got a message. He was putting on a bench as an assistant coach. I don't think he likes that, Keith. I think he wants to get some PT. Well, he can bang if he puts his mind to it. You know, he's big and strong. He can score. He really has great ability to score down in the low boxes. But he has to become a much more complete player by working on his rebounding and getting a little bit more aggressive. Reeves handles the ball out in front. Bomack is into the ball game in place of Chris Mills, who got two fouls early on. They got a nice bench when you can bring a Womack in a game. Brian Williams puts it up. You got a foul inside called on Tracy Murray. Foul is on number 30, Tracy Murray. Hey, Luke, take a seat, buddy. Both teams, I think you probably noticed the American flag. Recognition of the fact that many of our people are in the Persian Gulf. 
Brian Williams was so highly acclaimed out of high school. Went to Maryland, had a tremendous freshman year. Averaged 12 points a game, was the premier diaper dandy in the ACC. Got a little bit unhappy, went to the West. Had really an up and down year last year. Much more consistent year this season. 15-14, trying for the two-point lead, and he gets it. I hope he stays in school. Some rumors say he may go to the NBA draft. He's not ready for the NBA. He needs another year on the Ludos. I'm surprised he doesn't beef up a little more. But he looks to me like he's got a frame where you could add another 15-20 pounds. Yeah, he does. He's got to get on those weights. He's battling right now, checking McLean. Mulebach. Good defensive play. It's Tarver against Williams. That's a mismatch. Oh, what a great effort right there watching the big fella run the court. McLean oh. gives it to Murray, and he responds. Murray can't believe it. He said, I got an assist for McLean. He actually gave the rock up. I can't believe it. Mouth is still open. <laughs> <laughs> McLean's a scorer, a big-time scorer. Womack, who is from Southern California, hands it off, and you get a travel call. Charlie Range with the ball on Khalid Reeves. There goes McLean. He's going to drive the scene. Everybody thinks he's shooting, and he makes the pass. He says, look, I can give it up. Good play, the m, &M guys. McLean to Murray. Atkins handling the ball. Keith Owens, who was a walk-on, got a scholarship. That's Murray out of the corner. Williams, another rebound. Long pass down the court. Womack is fouled hard by Murray. Womack gets out in front in transition. Murray hits him. Womack was ejected in the game against California. And if he gets ejected one more time, Keith, under the new NCAA rule, he would be banned from the tournament and from any other games. Fun for the season. Game. Williams is going to get a breather now, and as Brian goes out, he has uh, eight points. He did a solid job. I like this kid, Tracy Murray, going to the sideline. Murray came out of high school, and a lot of people thought that he was very soft and that he scored all those points against no competition. He's the highest scorer in the history of California high school basketball. Womack, who is out of Pasadena, California, misses the first free throw. As usual, the All-Star game is close. Yeah, real close game there. Yesterday, that slam jam bam contest. Won by D. Brown out of Jacksonville, now playing for the Celtics. What do they say he's got? 41-inch vertical jump. Yeah, he really can get what? up in the sky. Wow. Jumps like I do, kid. You saw uh -huh. me jump before the game. I certainly did. <laughs> I can't get One over seven eights on a good day. <laughs> <laughs> Mitchell Butler handles the ball to McLean. Keith Owens inside. That's Derek Martin for Tarver, who is a freshman. Remember Sean Tarver? He went to Las Vegas, was released when they went into the... Uh, did you see that jump hook? That's a whole new weapon, isn't it? That was an unbelievable post move. And he's battling on Stokes inside. They've got to get a foul on McLean. They're really battling in there. I'll tell you, he's a lot tougher than I thought, Keith McLean. Hanks it off the glass, and Stokes says, there you are, big fella, one for you. Stokes really had to earn that boost because McLean was really playing on a defensive end. Three-point lead, Arizona, at 21 to 18. Martin's open. Rebound, Rooks loses it, picked up. Deron Johnson in the ball game now for Arizona, number 23. There's a foul on Martin. Reeves has really, really come of age. He's getting better and better. He's getting more minutes as we look at Derek Martin. Martin. Martin couldn't miss yesterday. He challenged me to a game of horse, and he made five three-point shots in a row. I said, you're not supposed to shoot like that. <laughs> Three-point lead, Wildcats. I got to get, okay, you got to try to help me out. I cannot hear Keith at all. I'm not hearing. Here, listen. Can you hear me? Try this. Can you hear me at all? Well, you don't hear the crowd yelling now, but. Uh... Where he plays the same people. Let's say opposed to someone like a Dean Smith or a Bobby Knight who are constantly changing their lineups. Zone Arizona defense. with the ball. They zone defense right now. Yep. 2-3. They zoned them in Tucson in the earlier game and had some success with it. 
Well, they don't have a lot of size, so the zone. Look at these guys shoot that three. That's Tracy Murray for three. Scored over 3,000 points in high school. We're tied. He averaged 44.7 his senior year, Keith. Average. Baby brother ain't too bad either. Cameron out of Glendora High School. Now they change. They go back to man-to-man -to -man defense. Changing defense to keep Arizona from getting a rhythm. Forced shot by Duran Johnson, and uh, the officials bail him out with a foul, and a moment with Jack Aroot. Keith, during that last time out, Coach Lou Olson for the Arizona Wildcats was talking to all of his players, and he brought up two points. He said, first, gentlemen, under the boards, we need to communicate more. We need to be able to talk this thing out. Who's open? That's offensively. Defensively, he was chastising the entire team for not getting their hands up under the boards on defense. He's an amazing story and coach and what he's done at that program of Frank Lloyd Wright. He took that program. They were 1-17 in, in a Pac-10. And this guy has just been brilliant as Johnson's on the free throw line. That breaks the tie for Arizona, a one-point lead. There's the principal matchup next Sunday. Indiana, a winner today. They're also regional action next Sunday. And a big one down in the uh, SEC for Alabama. They're now at 9-3 with Kentucky. Keith Owens over the rim, no good. Johnson way up, the knife flying high. I like that. Real quick athlete. Greaves drills three. He's going to be a star. He is absolutely going to be a star in Arizona. He may also be the door opener for others from the eastern part of the country to come to Cactus Country. Well, they'll be playing in New Jersey against Georgia Tech next Sunday. And they're after a guy by the name of Roderick Rhodes. Some say the best junior in America oh. out of New Jersey. Look at Tarver. Goes down hard, but he'll get up. He's young and limber. Murray forces and gets it. Tracy Murray's a born scorer. He's got ability around the basket as well as his tremendous perimeter shooting ability. Another story about the Murray family. When they were the night of the loss to USC on January 30, the house burned. Terrible night for the Murray family. You mentioned his younger brother, but they say he's going to be one heck of a player. He's playing in Glendora as a freshman. He's a ninth grader. Ninth grader. There's that 2 3 zone. Williams is back in now. Good ball movement. You want to drive the gap of that zone. You've got to drive this gap. The wings should give you a good shot on the wing. Foul will go on uh, Keith Owen. Here's Jack for a moment. Watching the outstanding play of Khalid Reeves coming off the bench, Keith. You know, he's had one major adjustment coming to Tucson, Arizona from New York City. He did not know how to drive a car. He was totally without license when he came there. So he found a friend that had a car to teach him how to drive. But a typical high visibility basketball player, the friend had a BMW. <laughs> he's a Beamer, driving a Beamer. That foul was an offensive foul on Duran Johnson. Johnson, not a skilled offensive player. He gives him a good athlete and a defensive player. Murray again. That three bounces off the back iron, and Reeves hustles him up in a hurry. Behind the back, into the paint. Ball rolls around, and he eventually fetches it up again. I mean, he's really getting a hard time, and Derek Martin is finally called for the foul. Martin wants the offensive foul to be called on Reeves for using the elbow. Martin in high school had 44 points in his last high school game, and he was outstanding at the Nike camp when he hooked up with Chris Jackson when he was a freshman. Here's a look at Reeves now. There's, now watch the reach in. As soon as you reach in, see, that's a that's a no-no. As soon as Martin sticks that hand in, immediately the whistle will be blown. Murray with two, Martin with two now for the Bruins. Mills is on the bench with two. It's a one plus one here. For Reeves, and he makes the first one. Well, three acclaimed freshman play, and then the Pac-10. You look at Sean Tarver for UCLA is an outstanding talent. So is Reeves, but they don't get as much PT as McLean comes back. I'll tell you a freshman I liked yesterday, Keith. I fell in love with Jamal Faulkner from out of Arizona State. I went to see Southern Cal play yesterday, and Bill Frieda's got a tremendous frost. He had 25. <laughs> That spins out. Brian Williams rebounds it, takes it up, and there's a whistle and a foul. Mitchell, Mitchell Butler went out of the ball game when Don McLean came back in for the Bruins. Reeves misses the free throw. Now Williams going to show some aggressive play here. Very active, the left hander, and there's the reach in. There's the foul by Murray. Big size differential. Brian Williams shooting 
I mentioned earlier Arizona State, and I want to get into this about Jimmy Herrick and Bill Frieda. Frieda was livid after the game, according to insiders yesterday, because Herrick had made a statement after they had played against Arizona State that he couldn't understand Frieda playing a ball control and slowing it down after running all year. Well, Frieda took it as an insult, and he said, hey, you guys tell Herrick for me, he's got four losses in a Pac-10. That should be a top five team in America. So let him worry about Arizona, not Arizona State. Herrick said today, hey, why is he so sensitive? I'm going to call him up and have a drink and put that to bed because I don't mean anything by it. Relax, Frieda, relax. Never. <laughs> Janice was over there yesterday trying to shush him. You do, a, you do such a great job with one word. I need 5,000. <laughs> <laughs> Womack missed it, and look at that Ryan Williams go up there and slam it down. He is really fired up today, Keith. You can see it in his eyes. Ryan Williams is here to play. 12 points, and here's a whistle and a foul on Matt Muehlbach. He and Tarver were really going at it. Tarver has two fouls already, and now Muehlbach does too. Oh, there's Williams with the slam cam way up, up, up in the sky. He's an intense competitor. Well, he's going to have to play inside, Rick, if he goes to the next level, and he's going to need to be a little heavier. He's going to get, yeah, he definitely has to get stronger. I think he needs another year of tutelage under Lute Olsen in terms of completing his game a little bit more on the offensive end. 8.14 to go now in the first half, and it's an eight-point lead for Arizona. In the rebounding, the Wildcats lead UCLA 14 to 7 as McLean puts up a three-pointer. That was great execution. He ran a follow series where he followed, gave the ball back, and then ran through the defense off a down screen, popped out. He's a very, very polished offensive player, Don McLean. The rebounding story is just the reverse today of what it was over in Tucson when UCLA dominated the board. And up goes Stokes for another deuce. Ed Stokes really playing well, getting the start today. California kid. Last year he started the last 16 games. It was very effective. Brooks didn't stay in there very long, did he? Not right now. He's got to earn that playing time again by really being a better defensive player and a better rebounder. Othic. Othic commits the foul. That's his first. Murray now with 11 points will try to make it 12. What I like about Tracy Murray is his ability to score both on the baseline and out on the wing. He really is multi-dimensional as an offensive player. Can you imagine if they had Ed O'Bannon? Ed O'Bannon, to me, would be probably one of America's premier freshmen. What a beautiful young man. That's the young man with the knee problem. Uh, he had reconstruction surgery. He may or may not be back. Though they say his progress yeah, is quite good. O'Bannon, like Tarver, were at UNLV, but were released. We were talking about Ed O'Bannon a moment ago and the fact that they are now over here, but Ed's laid up because of reconstructive knee surgery came in a pickup game. But you want to talk about what if, <laughs> what if those two kids were still over there with Tarkanians much? I'll tell you one thing, they wouldn't get too much playing time, but they'd find a way to play this guy because he is something special. He said he's going to call Bernard King and have a talk with Bernard King and try and get some advice, and I think that's a great move. Oh, nice play by Reeves to the dish. Excellent pass. Womack runs the court. A six-point lead right now for the Wildcats. Reeves has really been a spark off that bench. Yeah. Man to man well, defense. He's solid. I mean, you just look at him, you see his, the fundamentals are solid for one so young. He's a combo guard, too. He can play either the point guard or the second guard slot. Womack right now trying oh, to nice play Murray. Look. Murray got away from him. Another assist for McLean. Tom McLean showing me that he's a complete offensive player. He's showing today that he can pass the ball as well as shoot the basketball. Six and a half minutes to go in the first half. Two-three zone. The wing should give you some good shots against the two-three. If you put a guy at the point and go to like a one-three-one one set, you usually get high percentage shots on the wings. Reversing, they'll get by walk. Here comes the m, &M gang. There's McLean going to run up high. And there's the dump down. Great look. He attracts people to him because he fakes the jump shot and then the quick dump down to his teammate. Back door. 
McLean, nope. Rebound. Williams slaps it out to Womack to Reeves. Reeves on the move against Matkins. Takes it in. Score it. Yeah, no. He waved it off, didn't he? I think he should wave it off. I thought the foul took place before the release of the basketball. Jimmy Herrick in that striped suit. Former Pepperdine coach. Did an outstanding job at Pepperdine. Here goes Reeves now. He's going to try and get a change of direction. There was a little stutter, a little change on Matkins. Going to split the defense. He gets bumped before he releases the ball. The NBA, that would be a continuation yep. for him. In college, not a bad foul by Matkins. Puts him into a bonus, so he misses the yeah. top end of it. He benefited from that move. Murray again. Won't go down. Brian Williams soaring today. Murray steals a lazy pass and scores. Good anticipation by Murray after he shoots the jumper. He steps in the passing lane. We got ourselves a dandy basketball game. A lot at stake too, Keith, because in the Pac-10, they don't have a postseason, so the winner here is the legitimate championship of the, of the league. And you know when you get 11,000 plus come in on an 80-degree day to sit inside to watch a basketball game, you've got some quality. And it's 35-33, Arizona with 5-17 to play in the first half. Derek Martin has really controlled his game to become a point guard. He's thinking pass now rather than shot. McLean over Stokes is short. Arizona let it go. Bruins saved it. They rotate Stokes now guarding McLean. He's a quick shot blocker. Stokes has great size. Keith Owen just back in. And a whistle down inside. The Blaine's getting a real kick out of passing the basketball. Ray Forrest had just beaten, uh, had just, look at that score, 3 2. It looks like a baseball score. Lou Henson, what a job he is doing. Maybe spoke, the best coaching he's ever done this year. Well, I spoke to our boss, Dennis Swanson, this week, and he's a graduate of Illinois. And he says, hey, you better start giving credit to my guy, Lou Henson. He said, you better give him some credit. So you, you take care of him, will you please, Mr. Jackson? <laughs> what, are you looking for a new contract? Or what? Well, I got my producer that yellow. That's his stroke for boss. <laughs> hey, why not? Got to take care of the big banana. Nine at 35. Crowd roaring, as you can certainly hear. I love this kind of environment. There they are in that 2-3 zone. Get into the gaps of that zone. Reverse it, Reeves has got a shot. Gothic feels one. Williams' pass was too high. Brian was open at the second time. They pulled a play like that. Derek Martin makes him play for it. And Reeves made a mistake. When Optic made the little penetration, Reeves did not rotate back in defensive transition. And the quickness, and they're exploded here. It's showbiz. That's the first UCLA lead. is really hopping. It's alive. There goes Optic with the penetration. Look at the reach in. Martin oh, look at Stokes laying a screen. <laughs> Come in here, little fella. Woo. You talk about screens. We'll see screens next week when Indiana and Ohio State hook up. That'll be quite a match up in Columbus. Two shots for Matt. An amazing story. We touched on it a little bit earlier. He was on that moped. He got hit by a car on the campus. He had fractured his pelvis. He's playing with four pins plus a plate in his uh, pelvis. 
He's a tough guy. Mention in courage, Keith. I like to say something about somebody in my hometown, Scott May, whose dad is Milton May, a coach of the Pittsburgh Pirates. He was in a serious automobile crash Christmas Eve, and a lot of people didn't think Scotty would make it. Outstanding high school baseball player at Manatee High School. He not only made it, he came home Friday. And we wish you the best, Scotty, for a quick recovery. The crowd roaring as the Bruins have a four-point lead. there was one of about a hundred young Bruins who uh, camped out for three or four nights to get an early priority number. Today there was a big ball game played in the East UNLV in Arkansas. I asked Lute Olson if he's going to let his team watch it. Lute said. No, I think our, uh, I think our guys enjoy watching uh, the ball games on TV and, and frankly from our end of it I think that's good. It gets them up thinking basketball and uh, we'll eat our our pregame meal at uh, nine o'clock, and I'm sure they're not going to hang around for long. They'll uh, they'll get out and watch that ball game. Okay. UNLV won it, 112 to 105, and don't miss the christening next Sunday. <laughs> I am going to christen Dick Vitale with a hog hat. <laughs> hey, I'll tell you what, they won for a half and make him wear it home. At least Vegas got a half a loss. They lost. Hey, congratulations to UNLV. To win in that environment, like Lute Olson and I were talking before the game, to win in that environment, they're down at the half, and to come back and jump out as they did as the third foul, which is big on Tracy Murray. Who's going to beat that basketball team now, Keith? I can't see anybody beating them. You know, one tough stop left, and that's Las Cruces against New Mexico State. They're always tough down there. UCLA has had a 10-0 run. That may be stopped here as uh, Othic goes to the line off Murray's third foul. UCLA now with 10 team foul. Othic's such a key player. Had a poor shooting game against Southern Cal and Harold Miner. There's the best unknown player in the nation. He had a bad day yesterday and still looks super. He plays for Southern Cal. He had 36 against Arizona. He's just a tremendous talent, but Othic was 0 for 7. And then he had the horrendous day against LSU and Shaquille O'Neal just was unbelievable down there at the Duck Dome in and off Baton Rouge. Sean Rooks is back in the lineup for the Wildcats. Martin has gone all the way. This is Keith Owens against Rooks. Not a threat to score. Owens a defensive player and an excellent shot blocker. Sean Summer against Deron Johnson. Don McLean steps on the line. Here's Jack. Keith, you were talking about the students getting up and, and camping out. You know how tough a ticket was to get to this game that was sold out two months ago? We called five ticket brokers in Los Angeles. They all had tickets to upcoming Lakers games. Only one had 20 tickets remaining for this game. The face value, $21. You know what they were charging? 150 bucks a piece. That's in your category, Jack. You oh, spring oh. for the 150. Uh, number 23, Delon Johnson. Johnson getting a lot of playing time. Defensive player Deron Johnson from Tucson. Their program elevated to another level when a kid from Tucson by the name of Sean Elliott put a uniform on for Arizona. Johnson has two personals now, and Matkins will go to the line. Time remaining, 3 minutes, 11 seconds. First half, two-point lead, UCLA trying to make it three and down. Both teams now have 10 pounds. Sean Elliott was such a special player. He won the John Wooden Award 1988 to go to the Final Four. I think it's one of the amazing college stories is what Lute Olson has done at Arizona. And I think his presence has elevated everyone else up a notch. And that's why the Pac-10 right now is the most improved conference in America. It's a tough run from top to bottom. There aren't any easy stops. There's no automatic W's anymore. Uh, reverse the ball and you'll get every shot you want. The 2-3 zone really has holes on that wing. Get it into the gut, into the wing. There it is, right there. The wing is wide open. Nails it. 
Casey Schmidt, a sophomore from Valparaiso, Indiana. That's his reputation, a shooter. Role players are so important. Can't win with all stars, Keith. McLean is fouled by Williams. They're really going after each other, Williams and McLean. Know each other, reputations grow from the scholastic level. He almost went to Georgia Tech. He was not happy with the Walt Hazard era, Mr. McLean, and he almost went to Georgia Tech, but did Jimmy Herrick convince him to put on the UCLA uniform? Has the post up, there's the turnaround. McLean uh, slapped him across the face on the way down. That second personal foul on Brian Williams. Saturday, ABC's Pro Bowlers Tour starts the day at 3 to Central, $160,000 Bud Light Classic. And ABC's Wide World of Sports with our country's premier figure skating event, two time silver medalist Christy Yamaguchi. And the U.S. Figure Skating Championship presented by Diet Sprite and Nutra Sweet. It's live, except on the West Coast, Saturday on ABC Sports. McLean on the line. Excellent free throw shooter. He was really down that they didn't get Cherokee Parks, the super high school 6'11 kid, to come here for next season. As we look at the full court trap, he's going to Duke. I really believe Mike Krzyzewski has got two 6'10 kids coming in next year. Both from California, and Parks is a tremendous one. Here's the half court trap. There's a foul on Matkins. Gerald, Gerald, don't cry right now, Gerald. Definitely grabbed him. Willis McJunkin doesn't even want to hear it. Look at Matkins trying to hold court. Willis McJunkin stepped right over there just in case there was temper after the collision. You know, you mentioned Mike Krzyzewski. You ready for this? Want a little news item? Right now, today. I'd be nervous if I were you, Mr. Fisher and Mr. Heathcote. Some say the best player in America, Chris Weber, high school star. He is on the Duke campus today. They finally convinced him to visit. He was there for their LSU game where they won really big over at LSU, and he will go to class there tomorrow. I'll tell you what, Keith, once you visit that place, it's pretty tough to say no. We'll see Duke in two weeks at Tucson against Arizona. Remember, Arizona right now with a 58-game win string on the line, and uh, the Blue Devils have been known to break a win string here and there. Well, they stopped Oklahoma's great win streak. Yep. I think it was 51. That's a great story. Lou Olson, 58 in a row at home. That's amazing as you look at the remaining schedule. That foul on Stokes, his second. It's kind of interesting that he's got two outsiders like Georgia Tech and Duke involved in a schedule that is crucial within the Pac-10 conference, a conference that does not have a postseason tournament. He doesn't play any cupcakes, I'll tell you that. I was going to say earlier, if Cherokee Parks and Ed O'Bannon were healthy, I would make UCLA my preseason number one next year. But because they're not, I'm going to go with next year, we're going to talk already. Indiana, with the addition of Allen Henderson, will be number one, and Duke will be my number two team. Why don't you wait before you get in trouble? Ah, I like to jump the gun. <laughs> I like to jump the gun. Here's man-to-man -man defense. Casey Schmidt, who hit a three-pointer a little while ago, stays in the ballgame. Go to Rooks. Go to Rooks offensively. Go to Rooks. Up for it is Womack. He's got it. And there's a foul. Good luck, Butler. Excellent pump fake by Wayne Womack. What a valuable player to bring a guy like Womack off the bench with his versatility. He can play inside. He's improved his perimeter skills. They try to get it to Rooks. Now watch Womack. There's the head fake. See what the head fake did? Mitchell Butler, you left something on the floor. One point lead, UCLA. McLean can't get it, but rebounds it as it comes outside. He has excellent hands. They want him to be nailed for what they call the hooking foul offensively. He's as good as an offensive big player that I have seen. They hit by Stokes his perimeter skills. Man. Stokes has three personal fouls now. Look at those numbers. Lou Alcindor, 26.4. And with all the players that have played here, Don McLean is number two. Score and average. Yeah, quite a Othic is out. Reeves is back. Yeah, quite a confrontation with Sean Vanderveer. 
as Arthur goes to the sideline at the World Championship tryouts. They got into a little battle, and Vanderveer from out of Colorado hit him with a right and broke his cheekbone. And a lot of players, he hasn't been popular with his opposing players. Even some of his teammates have been upset that he's been a guy that's done a lot of talking, but they say he's really, really has improved that. Next to three throws. He can play for me. 16 for 16 from the line, and he has just tied Bill Walton. Scoring. One of the problems you got, Dick, and I don't, you just simply cannot get away from it. The, the athlete of today, of the stature of a McLean, is like a congressman. He's under constant scrutiny. You can't say anything or do anything without somebody improvising on it. So I say media is as much responsible for a lot of this as anybody. Well, because there's so much visibility, Keith, there's so much exposure, so many games are televised now. You have games on all week long as opposed to years ago, just on a weekend. It's kind of like the comment Bob Winslow made last week. Remember the good old days when a guard was a guard? <laughs> Offensive foul. Offense on it. That's Womack. Keith Owens gives him some good defense, rotates over. As you said earlier, a kid who came in as a walk-on and now has a scholarship. He plays in the trenches. He's one of your favorite players, role players, like in football. A lot of, a lot of spirit. Owens, of course, is a kid that hung in and hung in and hung in and has finally been rewarded too. Well, you like those you like those tackles and guards that are in the trenches that are clawing and scrapping. Ain't no hot dog halfback ever run without a big ugly in front of him. I'll tell you. <laughs> Mitchell Butler, who's another baby. Going to use the clock, playing for the high percentage shot. Barber, the freshman against Womack, goes down the paint. Saved, ricochets, count it to Martin, and he won't go down. Rebound, Stokes, and you got nine seconds. Reeves, short iron, Schmidt, shoot it, Price, shoot. And it counts, it counts. At halftime, UCLA 47, Arizona 46. Shot selection wasn't good down the stretch. We're going to watch right here. Rooks stay on top of the ball, and he scores. They love me, baby. They love me out here. They say, Dick, why don't you come out west more? We can play with the Big East teams, baby. Oh, I don't know where to begin. Oh, let's talk about all pine team. We got Lou Ritchie, a five foot ten guard. He's quick. He's got the three knees, baby. He drives. He delicious. And he delivers in the clutch. Then we got the microwave. Chris Kitty. He can shoot for three. Then we got Dave Paulsdale. Risk of versatility. Then we got Mike Lanier. That's why we only got four players on my team. Another one. <laughs> I tell you what, that's Llewellyn Ritchie, a walk on. He wants to wish a happy birthday to his mother. He should join a contest. They have a one tomorrow in Columbus, Ohio. He'd win some cash, but the NCAA would put him on probation probably. Arizona got only two minutes of playing time, two plus, out of Chris Mills. He has not scored. So well, he if they can do this well without Mills. Look out. He's their leading scorer. <laughs> two quick fouls. He didn't play well in the big W they had over UCLA either. He had four points. He's a good offensive player, though. All right, the Bruins go to work with Derek Martin handling the ball. That's Todd Murray, Gerald Matkins inside Mitchell Butler. Butler won't go down, and Tracy Murray slaps it away off the hands. And out of bounds to Arizona. And, of course, Don McLean, who was 10 for 10 from the foul line. For Arizona, it's Matt Othick and Matt Muleba. It is Brian Williams, who had a huge first half. Chris Mills and Stokes is in. Number 41, the big seven footer. Oh. They ran oh. a little rebound. It's Butler. They ran a little curl move for Mills and had the high low entry. Tracy Murray will oh. win. Butler rebounds. Blocked by Stokes. He does that well. He's an excellent shot blocker. He's got excellent timing. Ed Stokes is from Los Angeles. Brian Williams over McLean. He's really playing well. In fact, Pooh Richardson came over to say hello to us, the former UCLA Bruin, and he said McLean and Williams can play in our league. Oh, nice inside-outside. 
McLean from the top of the key. And he starts out in a low post position, and he comes off the screen, pops out high. So effective on the perimeter. Mulebach handling the ball. What a tough defensive job Matkins is doing on Mills. Oh, on Matkins. Gerald is counting his teeth after getting whacked in the mouth, but he's pointing at us. He says, look at the monitor, he's pointing at us. There's Williams now trying to post inside against McLean. McLean, not a strong defensive. See, Matkins doubles up. Not a good job by Williams right there. Should have recognized the open Chris Mills as soon as Matkins came at him. Matkins has got to get out of the ball game, too, because he's now got four personal fouls. Mills in and out. Rebound, Mule block twice and still doesn't go. And Ed Stokes on the rebound. Jump ball possession for Arizona. Stokes really wants to stay on the floor. Matkins with the floor goes off. Farber comes in. Miss a solid defensive player. He's their defensive stopper, Gerald Matkins. Mills in the corner. Whips the pass across to Mulebach. Williams into the feet. This is as well as I've seen him play, Key. He, he really wants the ball and wants to score in a post. I think it may be his best game. One point lead, Arizona. That shot short. Wildcats running it early in the half. And you got a blocking foul called on Derek Martin. Foul is on number 15, Derek Martin. Martin has three. The last play when Williams got his basket. I don't know, questionable walk. Did he come off and not? See, some guys are excellent at establishing both feet as a pivot foot. That was very close. Doesn't matter, it's in the book. Counts. They've been calling that walk a lot this year. Stokes rims and comes out, and Butler rebounds it. UCLA's foul situation as McLean puts it up short. Rebound Williams is Murray three, Martin three, and Matthews four now. Arizona 50, Bruins 49. We're Little. just getting underway in the second half. They should really go into Williams. He should slide inside, give it off, and slide inside against McLean. Now give it off, slide inside, Brian. Go down to the trenches. A lot. They should get it to Williams. McLean tries to front him. Williams uh, with a little push, got away from him. That's where they got to go. They got to take advantage of his ability offensively and really try to wear out McLean, who has to really exert himself offensively. Oh. Oh. move by Derek Martin. A collision, a whistle by Willis McJuckin, and a foul called on Tracy Murray. That's four on Murray. That's a real big foul. Now with Murray and Matkins in foul trouble, UCLA loses half of their productive forward combination. Uh, he's putting on a show right now. Right. He, McLean went down, crushed to the floor, gets up holding his neck. No whistle. The UCLA bench is raging. McLean holding his neck. The doctor coming down to talk to him. McLean is red hot. This is where he's got to keep his poise. Oh, he's, he can watch out a technical right here. Well, if it's anybody other than Willis McJunkin, he probably wouldn't have gotten away with what he just said. I'll tell you one thing, he would have talked that language to Dickie Papara, who would have been boom, boom, gone, and out of here. Gone to the grocery store. Look at Jimmy Herrick. <laughs> Williams has scored all eight Arizona points here in the second half so far. McLean has to come out of the ball game. So you don't get charged with a timeout. End of the game for the Bronx. Zan Mason, Zahn Mason will come in. 6'7", 215, sophomore from Los Angeles. They want the offensive foul. What do you think? Well, I think it's one of those calls you can debate all day, but I thought that the defense was a little bit slow in establishing position. I'd give the edge right there to the offensive player. All right, Mitchell Butler fires off the board. A couple of bounces, won't go down. It's up one more time. And there's a foul inside in what 
is becoming a melee under the basket. This is one heck of a basketball game, and Tarver with a good offensive rebound. Well, the the diaper Dandy, who had committed to UNLV verbally, along with O'Bannon. There he is, working on the glass. Ball pops out with a 21. Tarver, a little head fake. Goes up, score. Foul is on Stokes, he has four. And Rooks has got to come in now. The trade offense for defense now, bringing Rooks for Stokes. Butler! Butler with that good head fake. They all utilize the head fake so effectively. One point game, again. This is a must win for UCLA to remain alive in the Pac-10. Inside, Stokes is hammered, but the ball goes out of bounds. It belongs to Arizona. It is getting very, very physical out here. The officials now going to have to take charge, maybe call these guys together and simply say, hey, I'm not going to tolerate any running in the mouth. Mills is still silent in the ball game. Tone defense right now by UCLA. Inside, he's hammered. He will go to the line, and the basket counts. He can score in a low post as well as any big guy in America, maybe with the exception of Shaquille O'Neal. That is his forte at 20 last year against Michigan in a Hall of Fame Classic, and from that time on, he became a known low post scorer. Keith Owens getting the foul. Butler is out now, and McLean comes back having done away with the pain in his neck. The reason I say this is real big for UCLA, with four losses and Arizona having three, if Arizona were to widen the gap to a two-game margin, five of their next seven are at home. Do they win at home? Try 58 in a row. Well, plus UCLA still got to go to Seattle and Pullman, among other places. Keith Owens drives and doesn't get it. And the Wildcats, Brian Williams has another rebound. He's playing so hard today, Brian Williams. 57-53, Arizona. Owens checking up on Rooks, big size differential. They got to go to the boxes, either the Williams or the Rooks on the box. Rooks gets the pass from Chris Mills, and he travels under the pressure. Chris Mills has still not scored a point, but Arizona leads by four. And Lou Olson is saying, Chris, are you playing? 57 to 53 over the UCLA Bruins here in Pauley Pavilion. And I'm pleased to be with the man that had a lot to do with the building of Pauley Pavilion, the Wizard of Westwood himself. 10 national championships for Coach John Wooden. Coach, we were talking about the University of Nevada, Las Vegas, and you were recently quoted about a week ago saying that all the talk about them being the best team ever, if you could take Bill Walton and Lou Alcindor down to UNLV, that you could give them a heck of a game. <laughs> well, the teams on which Alcindor played and uh, Walton, I, I wouldn't hesitate. I had other good players with them with... Uh, with Alcindor, when you take the guards like Mike Warren and Lucius Allen, uh, we're not afraid of anybody. And I don't think they have anybody that you can compare with Alcindor Walton. They have great balance, as we had with Wicks, Rowe, Patterson, Valerie, Bibby, and that bunch. But um, I, I don't believe uh, uh, you would trade uh, Walton or... Uh, or uh, Let me tell you what... What's so tough is he's so busy watching this game and trying to see what it's going to take to put UCLA back ahead. If you were back there coaching, what would you tell the guys right now? I don't know what I'd tell them. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, before the game, he held court over here, and what was so heartwarming was to see students flock to him asking for his autograph. He's a lovely man. Beautiful. The best coach of time. all time, Keith, of all time. Yeah great human being not just a great coach but a great man and uh, that is ultimately what truly matters is the rebound cleared out of there by Chris Mills he brings it all the way down Rooks is inside and he commits the foul Offense. he went left if he goes right he scores he went left he fouled offensive foul on Rooks not good decisions by UCLA offensively Keith Owens' game is not to shoot the perimeter shot. You've got to play to your strengths as a basketball team. 
And they got to get the ball in the hands of their scorers. If you look at the foul trouble right here, Williams has 20 points. He has 11 rebounds now. He is 8 of 8 from the field. So a huge day for Brian Williams as Arizona leads by 7 at the 14-minute mark. And a solid 20. He has not taken a bad shot yet. They double up on McLean. He just kicks it out to the open man. Goes in hard. And he is fouled. Mason, a real good defensive player. Excellent jumper. Also number 45, Sean Rooks. Yeah. Brian Williams right now trying to check Mason. A little bit too quick for Brian out on the perimeter. Let's not have that foot speed out there to check a small forward. Go back to what you said early on. Uh, in, in, uh, thinking about next year, I should tell people that Keith Owens is the only senior on the UCLA team. They are back, Keith. There's no doubt they are back again in terms of, we're not talking national championship, but being a legitimate top 20 team in America every year, I really believe you'll see that. Mason finally gets a hot rock to drop. A hot rock to drop. I like that saying. <laughs> see, I'm getting you. I'm swinging you around. <laughs> Six-point lead now, Arizona. Free throw line certainly helping That's UCLA. It. Full court trap right now. There's the trap. Somebody's got to post up. There it is. Post up. Brooks goes low. Now double low with Williams inside. And Mills still hasn't scored. Now he has. That's a three-pointer. First one of the day. Didn't get much play in time in that first half. Picked up those two fouls, went to the bench, and sat for 17 minutes. Derek Martin handling 63-55 Arizona. Derek has really become a little quarterback, always looking for the open man. This is Sean Turber. Lob inside, intended for Owens. Williams takes it away. Excellent anticipation by Williams, rotating over from the help side. He got away with a dance there and scored. That was a little disco. But I'll tell you one thing, I liked his quickness to the basket. This is far and away his best game. He's got to make some decisions right now, Jimmy Herrick. When do you bring in Tracy Murray and get some scoring? Ten-point lead as Williams oh, look at that hustle. skin diving for the ball. They're out hustle. Oh, a little push right here. Matt Alfred. Good move by Don McLean walking away. Good move by Don McLean. He gets, he's hot-tempered. As Lute Olsen won four Pac-10 championships, he's in his eighth year. Jesse Evans right behind him. All right, here comes coach. Atkins and Murray back into the game, Dick. You've got 12.55 to play. You've got to put two guys back in with four personal fouls. And now you have to really stay with the zone defense to try and protect them. If they play man-to-man, -man, you know the well-coached Arizona team is going to attack Tracy yep. Murray. Williams really working to try to keep the ball away from McLean. Oh. Slapped out of there by Sean Rooks. I think there's a lot of talking going on on the floor. Well, you got a lot of kids in the same area playing against each other right here. Look at this. McLean is going to lose, and McLean is fouled by Williams. Tom McLean's one of those guys you talk about who's born to score. Just has everything about him named scorer. Unbelievable. Williams now with three personal fouls. You know, you think about all the great forwards that have played here, the Sidney Wickses, the Rose, as Coach Wooden mentioned them. You think of Keith Wilkes and David Greenwood. He's got the highest scoring average of any of those forwards. He's got 20 points right now. But he's played in a different era as well with a three-point shot. That chops the lead from 10 to 7. Not a good man to man. I'd go right at Tracy Murray. I would not waste any time. Look at that. Putting Murray on Mulebach. I would drive on him. I would drive on him. Whoops. Got it. Uh, Excellent uh, offensive player. Well, you got uh, you, they got to go now. Keith Owens on John Rook. That ain't going to work. And what a play there. Huh? Gerald Matthews, Mr. Courageous, playing with four pins in his pelvis and a plate after a serious bullpen accident on campus. What a move to the basket.
That comes the drive. He's determined. He says, I'm taking it right at you, Williams. Get out of my way. And it's going to count, Williams. And Williams looks. He says, does it go in? Does it go in? Williams now, however, has four personal fouls. He's got to come out see that they have the kind of people that they can rotate. They'll bring Womack on the floor. He's having his best day today. St. Monica High School was his last stop in high school. I say last stop. He played at four high schools. <laughs> he was the traveling man, the Marco Polo of college basketball. Two colleges, four high schools. Matkins makes it a three-point play, and it's a six-point Arizona lead at 67-61. See, Wilbach has been quiet in the second half. They go to Rooks. Oh, nice play off it to reel it in. He shoots it off the glass. Rebound. Mills a foul. That's four on Mr. Mills. No, or three. No, That's three. three on Mr. Mills. Three. Well, you got to play him now, though. Very poised. Oh, yeah, with three, he's got to stay on the floor, especially with Williams with four. Atkins handling the ball out at the point. He had a good freshman year. Butler with a rainbow. Rebound, Rooks. That's what they need out of Brooks. If he does that, he'll stay on the floor and get minutes. Eleven out of the game. Butler checking off it. Matkins on Mills. Mills should take Matkins with those four. Brooks double teamed inside. Hammers into the paint. And traveling call. I don't understand their shot selection right now. To paint the scenario. Right now, you have Murray with four and Matkins with four. Mulebach and Mills have to attack those two. Sacrificing himself, but along the way, he's picked up four fouls. That's why he's on the bench, but he's got a double-double. 22 points, 11 rebounds, and really aggressive play on the interior. That's the real Brian Williams we heard a great deal about. UCLA trailing by six. The ball is poked out of there by uh, Arizona. And the Wildcats move it up. Right now, they've got to look to Chris Mills. They've got to look to Sean Rooks. And Mills goes inside, misses the shot. Rebound, Tracy Murray playing with four fouls. And so is Gerald Matkins for UCLA. Rebound, Womack. Excellent decision by Mills to take one-on-one -on -one Murray. Murray's trying to check him now. Now they rotate Matkins to him. Remember, both are playing with four. See, right now, look at Tracy Murray defensively showing versatility, playing Muehlbach on a perimeter. You're going to have to drive on Matkins and, uh, and Murray, though. You can't stand out in front of him. you got to... Got to right, see, there it is. He's going to drive play. right by him. Great move. That's just great decision. What a That's smart Ubach. play. Eight-point lead, Arizona. They come up on 10 minutes to go in the game. Simple clear out. They know Murray has the four fouls. Great call by Lou Dolson. Help McLean. Oh. Can't get him out. That's Keith Owens. That's your role player you talked Keith about, Owens. Keith. Tough guy. They like to have Butler on Mills. But Chris shots around until he gets Matkins or Murray. Little double screen they run for this side of the floor. Great play, Murray, defensively. Comes down with the ball. Oh, that's a good and Mulebach answers it. There's no way they could have handled that pass. He had a trailer on his left. Jimmy Herrick takes the team last year to the Sweet 16, where Murray drilled that one-on-one, -on -one and the Jayhawks went to the sideline. Kansas, one of the hot teams in America. Six-point UCLA trails, and play by Murray. That's a Magic Johnson kind of play, running your knee in the air, going away, using the right hand. You guys like to talk in football about the quarterback trying to make the pass as he's rolling to the left, back to the right. We, I'd call that a hoper. <laughs> and a go sock. He took the walk. He well, it's McJunkin with the ball. These officials are doing a solid job. He absolutely, even if I can see it, I guarantee you he will. 
tries to take his jump move. He lifted his pivot foot. Excellent two-man play, though. Had the right idea. Drew the defense to him. Dumped it to Rooks. Bruins coming back. They trailed by 10 at one time here in the half. Brian Williams is out of there, and Arizona sorely misses him. It's McLean. Shoots and he won't go. Rebound is off to Womack. Tough luck on McLean. Shot. UCLA. Reeves is in. UCLA, a different team on both sides. Bad floor. shot there, Dick. He's as cool as can be. He's got like ice in his veins. We're not a New York City. A little one-on-one -on -one move by Reeves. That's his foul. Matkins must be watching the Magic Man throw his bounce pass. Look at that bounce pass. One hand right on the numbers. And there's wow, Mr. Uh, Butler. He says, I'm just like three. James Worthy. I'm flying in the sky. Reeves Darryl, that committing the foul. That's one. his second. This is a great college basketball game. The environment today, the intensity, what's at stake. Look at the fast break points. UCLA, known as a running team, should have the edge. Six to one. <laughs> Rebound, Rooks. 71, 67. Eight minutes exactly to play in the game. Now they change. They come out of the man-to-man. -man. They go to the zone. Let's see if Arizona gets into a gap. See the gap where he's going to drive right at that gap. Make two people play him. They're playing on a perimeter here, using some time on the clock. Arizona should shorten the game now if they can, I would think. They're overloading against the zone, putting four against Mills three. Mills forces it up in traffic, and it's out of there. Stolen by Womack, and a whistle and a foul is called. On Mill. Charles Range quickly steps in. Arizona went to an overload. When we talk Not about Mill. an overload, it's against three people on one side of the floor, they place four people trying to get the high percentage shot. Not Mills, Rooks. Well, Chris still has three, and now Rooks has three. If Arizona, I'm going to get you mad. I know you're a graduate of Washington State. Where's that? In Pullman, Washington? Let me tell you this. What do you mean, where, where's that? Uh, it's in Pullman. I mean, I don't know. I've never been up there. <laughs> but let me tell you this. If Arizona wins this game, Lute Olsen, he gets his fifth Pac-10 championship. Oh, I think so. If they win this game, yeah. even though Washington State is 7-4, and four, yeah. five of their seven are on the road. I think Arizona's right. five of seven are at yep. home. Yep. Well, thanks. I'm glad you agree with me. <laughs> Two-point lead for Arizona. Fouls, Martin three for UCLA. Here's the play of the game so far. Transition basketball starts with possession, then penetration, and then points. The three P's. But what a tremendous look by Butler. That's like a fast break drill right there. Rebound. And look at his emotion. Mitchell Butler. But this guy made the pass. Gerald Matkins. For Arizona, Stokes and Williams have four fouls. Mills three and Rooks three. You got to credit Jimmy Herrick also recognizing. They were being ready to be put away down 10, and he brings Murray back in, and Matkins with the four foul. Brian Williams is back in. They need him. He's been so effective today, Brian Williams. 22 points, 11 rebounds. Chris Mill, back door. What a great call. That was created by the presence of Brian Williams, who slipped up high and cleared out the backside. Lute Olsen does such a solid job teaching, drilling. I'm gonna run some screens for McLean now. I really like him, Keith. What range as a shooter. 
3,057 points in high school, the most ever by a California school boy. Arizona led by 10 at one time and a half. It's now only one. Ball stolen by the Bruins on a lazy pass. Great catch of the ball by Schindler. And a foul on Mills. That's four. Not only an excellent catch by Butler, but the good look to get the ball to the trailer, McLean. And in that case, you have to communicate. McLean's got to yell, I'm behind you, I'm behind you. He's been very passive today, Chris Mills. Gets his fourth foul, has not shown me the spark that I saw in New York City. Watch the catch, great hands. He makes like a flanker back, and then the little dish. End of the game, number 30, Wayne Womack. Here comes Womack, and Mills now with four will lead. He reminded me of making a catch like that flanker at Stanford. McCaffrey, who I watched against the Fighting Irish, catch a number of passes. His brother plays for Duke. And what, Bill? I saw Billy shooting 90% from the foul line. Yeah, no. he's excellent. This guy's an excellent free throw shooter. Yep. He's 10 for 10 in the first half. And he's now 12 for 12. He has shown some poise today. I told him before the game, I'm picking him on my old Bill Lambeer team. Tries like Todd Gay, Bob Hurley. A.C. Earl, 74-73, UCLA is back into the lead. Do you and think everybody in the Pac-10 is rooting for UCLA right now? Wow. Coming up on six minutes to play in the game. If they lose Arizona, they will have their fourth loss. What a balanced lead it would be. Double Ryan team. Williams, double team down low. Brooks is standing around. Now Sean starts to shake around a little bit. Three-point try, Optic, not even close. Great hustle, though, by Optic. Tremendous hustle. Look at him coming back on the floor. His dad was a coach. Coached at North Texas State as an assistant, Wichita State. Brooks can't handle the high pass. Leaning away from where the ball went. They well, look a little bit fatigued right now. You're yep. on the road. They were beaten by Southern Cal. UCLA is outscoring Arizona 19-8 in the last six minutes. So I demonstrated my Masters in 30 that I can read. <laughs> 18 turnovers for Arizona, only four for UCLA. UCLA really handling the ball well, but they're not really being pressured. Next Sunday will be another showcase. You talk about a league, the Big Ten, Indiana, Ohio State. Pat Othick getting the personal foul. Carol Atkins shooting two. Some of you will see Texas and Houston or Alabama and LSU. Houston gave Arkansas the business. Uh, they gave them a tough game. Played them real, real tough. Yeah. Two shots for Atkins, first one misses. 5-16 to go in the ball game and a one-point lead UCLA. That didn't shock me with Houston either because Houston had won 18 straight Pat Forster at home. Now we talk about winning time where free throw conversions become so big and execution offensively becomes really, really pertinent. You must get the high percentage shot. Back to the zone for UCLA. See, they're breaking that zone down by sneaking right behind it, and there's no awareness by UCLA as to where the man is on that back line. That's the second one they got against him. Yep. We're tied at 75. Well, the first one over at McHale Center was right down to the wire. No! Oh! He said, talk about the play and Brian Williams, and then they nail him with a technical for showboat. They nail him for a tee for showboating and hot-dogging it. Not a good move at all by Butler right there, Keith. Brian Williams was counting his limbs to see if he was still together. Unsportsman. And they hit Butler. Well, Unsportsman foul. conduct. Here it is. Now watch this. He goes up. He's flying in the air. He jams. Now he comes back down. Oh, no, it's Matt McLean. Gilbach. It's McLean throwing the ball. Bush League move. Flat out Bush. Flat out second rate move. No need for that. 
He can cost them a chance to win the Pac-10 if they lose this game. Very poor play by Don McLean. Well, he's got a temper. It flashes. Ah, uh, that's just immaturity, Keith. He's too experienced. He's too talented. Oh, Lord, the Wildcats. Now, Butler showboats a little, but really, that's just part of the game. Now, there's the jam. But you watch Don McLean take the ball. And Ballesteros is right on top of it. That's why he worked the final game last year of the NCAA. Hubach handling it out in front. One point UCLA lead, 77-76. Four and a half minutes to play in the game. They would have had possession of the ball anyway after the score, so the possession is Arizona. Brooks inside, double team to made it. Unless you don't want to aggravate your opponent and bring him up to another notch either. Smart decision. Rook's so effective on a box. I think both of them are pretty well aggravated. That's right <laughs> <laughs> really playing well at the point. That's Owen. Brooks. Murray. He didn't have the good angle. He had him on the hip. Not the good angle for the entry. Good defense by Arizona right there. Excellent defense. Good college basketball game. 3.33 to play. Hey, Kim. Now it's done with a capital D by McLean. Spoiling his great performance. There's the jam right now by Butch Butler. Now look at him throwing the ball with the official staring right at him. Richie Ballesteros, one of the best in the game, and McLean cannot get away with that. And there's the T. Resetting quickly, timeouts remaining. Both teams have three. Team fouls, Arizona 10, UCLA 4. They made one of those two technicals. If they lose by one, I'm going to have a little one-on-one -on -one with Mr. McLean if I were coaching. Rooks from the foul line. Won't go down. Won't go down for Womack. William Ball! Is he possessed? Now he lays a little trash talking on the floor. Too much talking. they got to start yep. playing hoops. Too Three much talking. Three-point lead, Arizona now. Three minutes to play in the game. Murray. That's what he does well. Play basketball. Muehlbach to Womack. Nice play by Muehlbach. Very steady player. Very important Mulebach. part of the Arizona team. Matkins to Owen. What a game we have here, Keith. NBA style, 24 second clock stop. Keith Owen's got a little jumper off the glass. A la John Wooden. John Wooden used to teach that. Bill Buck and Othick out in front. Womack, Rooks, and Williams inside for the Wildcats. Good move by Womack, but he can't get a drop, and it's off the Bruins. It's amazing that UCLA's been able to play with four fouls. Wake Forest, Rodney Rogers, the best diaper Dan in a, dandy in America. West Virginia beating on Temple by three. Look at Illinois winning on a road again by 16 at Minnesota. Lou Henson, what a job. Hubach across to Williams. They almost miss each other. Williams puts it up and in, and there is a foul. I don't think he's missed a shot, Keith. Not I don't many. think he's missed a shot. Oh, oh I remember he was nine for nine. 25. Well, as we just tick down to two minutes, you've got a three-point lead for Arizona. Williams is playing with four fouls. Stokes is on the bench with four. Mills is on the bench with four. Rooks has three. For UCLA, Murray and Matkins are on the floor playing with four. Williams uh, with 28 points now to go with 12 rebounds and 12 of 12 from the feet. Can't get better than that. I mean, you talk about a perfect day. Lou Dolson stays nice and calm and cool and collective. Tony McAndrews, an assistant with him. Look at these numbers today. Impressive. And he had to sit some minutes with four fouls. He went to the coast to have his big, big day. 
Williams misses the free throw, and UCLA rebounds it. We're under two minutes now. And 84-81, Arizona lead as UCLA spends a timeout. They bring in Derek Martin. Jimmy Herrick gets in his point guard. He's done an excellent job well, right now during the timeout. Coach Herrick goes over one strategy, two assignments, three. Let them know again the score. Almost threw the ball in the backcourt. Martin handling the ball now for UCLA. 84-81 with a minute and 40 seconds to play in a ball game. Tracy Murray at the top of the key, but three won't go. And Arizona leading by three points. 84-81 moves down the court, handling the ball, Matt Othick. That was an excellent play. Right now, Arizona's going to use a lot of that shot clock, and Othick and Muehlbach are excellent free throw shooters. Womack stays in the ball game. Mills has not come back. Biggest possession of the game right here. UCLA must shut them down in this possession. On the other side, Arizona needs to get a score out of it. Hugh being hounded by Derek Martin. Martin very quick defensively. Brian Williams missed that. His only he missed a record with that shot. His only miss. Right now they're thinking three. Murray can shoot it. The Pac-10 record was 13 for 13 by Steve Johnson, Oregon State. He was, uh, Williams was 12 for 12 before the miss. There's the three by McLean. Ties it up. Oh, they gave him two. Was it two? Gave him two. Gave him two. That's a two 84-83 timeout the Bruins. I tell you, Metro Butler is out there. McLean is out there. Matkins comes out. He's got four personal fouls. Well, he is the only man on the court for the Bruins in foul trouble. There's a foul by Keith Owens. Keith reaching in, gets the quick foul. They're substituting Owens and Murray, foul offense and defense. Jim Herrig doing a solid job. Last year, as I said, takes them to the Sweet 16. They get beat by Duke, but they have that big win over Kansas. So UCLA having fouls to give. Now, that's only yeah, a 16 foul. What you can really do is Brad Holland, his assistant coach, played here a great shooter. What you do in, in that situation, you're trying to play for the steal. If you don't get it, to get the ball out of bounds. Pass comes in to Sean Rooks. Ryan Williams. Oh, the chair down. Oh, not communicate, and uh, UCLA has a one-point lead. Arizona timeout. 18 seconds to play in the game. Going to the last second, Mr. Jackson. And remember, in many cases, as Lou Olsen now will design the last shot, many times it is the missed rebound, that missed shot that causes a problem. As Williams, Here, they just didn't read each other, did they? Well, the ball's deflected, and Gerald Matkins, very alert, the defensive stopper. Makes Chris Mills is up and will inbound the ball. Inbounds it to Matt Othick. 85-84, UCLA. Ten seconds. Rooks has it. Rooks shoots. Rooks misses. Rebound, Butler. And a foul on Matt Muehlbach. Good call by Ludolson. You go to Sean Rooks. You try to come in with the offensive rebounding power. Jimmy Herrick's club looks like it's going to make life in the Pac-10 that much more interesting. If they finish this way, Arizona will be 7-4, Washington State 7-4, UCLA 6-4. Even if he converts these two free throws with the three-point shot, they still have the shot for the top. Six seconds to play. Six seconds is an eternity. You definitely can get a good shot. Butler soared up to get that rebound. Oh, he's been playing well, Keith. He gave him that big jam. He's 6'5", and he went about 40 inches into the air, at least to haul it down. And one more timeout. You've had here with league affiliation at state. Butler is 0 for 10 on the foul line in Pac-10 play. Wow. Wow. 0 for 11. Now remember, the three can win it for Arizona if he makes one. If he misses, 
They have a chance to win it with the deuce. Six seconds is plenty of time to get a high percentage shot. They'll get the ball in bounds quickly, run the ball up the sideline most likely. UCLA will try and put some poking pressure. He got the free throw. Let's see if they run at the half court and get a timeout. Six seconds now. UCLA leading by two. 86-84. Khalid Reeves passes inside. Mills gets the shot. Up. And he made it. And it'll count. It's got to count. It'll count. It's even at 86 and will go to overtime. Go to OT. Remember, a college game does not end with the zero showing. The game ends with the horn. And there's a red light. And that red light, the officials look at that red light. And if that red light is off, the shot is good. If the red light is on, well, it Mills, the ball had left Mills's hand before the light went off. Guarantee there it is. You. Chris Mills catches it. Bingo, out of his hand, and we're going to OT, and I got problems. No, you do. Big time problems. You at Pauley Pavilion, we're tied at 86, going to five-minute overtime, and here's the shot that tied the game as time expired. Chris Mills is number 42. It's not a touch pass. It's just a loose ball. Mills pounces on it, and the score, count it. Two timeouts each going into the overtime. UCLA, 16 fouls in Arizona. 10 possession error, UCLA. I know you're laughing at me, but you know what? I don't mind missing a flight when a game is this good. This is tremendous. <laughs> Not bad. Besides that, you figure you've got a chance to get me to buy you supper, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Derek Martin handling the ball. He's been relatively quiet today. Keith Owens is number 25. McLean inside. Murray to Matkin. Matkins all the way out on top of the key. McLean will put it up there. He's got that velvet touch. He has such a smooth release, excellent rotation on his shot. So the Bruins get the early lead in overtime. Rooks to Mills. When Rooks gets the ball in a post, you want to look opposite. Don't throw it back to the same side because you don't make the defense adjust. Brian Williams. Huge day for him. He has 30 points. He's really lighting it up here in Tinseltown. Will you Eastern guys stop that nonsense? You don't like hearing that. I know I did that last year. <laughs> I knew I'd get a rise out of you. We're conservative. Man. Straight laced. <laughs> and facing water rationing. <laughs> McLean again. <laughs> Weak side rebound foul. Climb in the back. Foul is on number 25, Keith Owens, Sean Rooks, shooting one and one. Rooks will be going to the free throw line, as there are the numbers that we gave you a moment ago. You get an extra timeout with the overtime. Everything really counts when you get to this kind of a struggle. Arizona came out of the gate beating Arkansas. It was so impressive in that NIT. They play such a tough, tough schedule. They played East Tennessee State, one of the real, real outstanding teams in America that people don't know about with Keith Jennings, the best little guy in basketball. Now you mentioned a little earlier, they still have dates with Georgia Tech, with Duke. Yep. We'll have the Duke game in two weeks for you here on ABC. Wildcats to the lead by two. Derek Martin so satisfied to be a little leader as opposed to a guy thinking score. He's learned how to play the point. That almost picked off by Kubak, but almost don't count in this game as Matkins knocks it down. Matkins has really had a big game. He's made big play after big play, both defensively and offensively. Mills looked. The break didn't work. Chris doesn't move well without the ball. He has a tendency to stand too much. Very easy. Rooks, hooks. And a plain rebound. Mills very easy to check because he doesn't move exceptionally well without him. Murray, no. Yep. One time by Owens, no, and Arizona runs it. Talk about a lateral rebound. Good play by Owens. That's just sheer hustle, returning back defensively, sticking a hand in. He was a walk-on player and has now become a scholarship player. One of the great walk-on stories is down in Michigan, Freddie Hunter, starting as a walk-on player. Mills, no, almost an air ball, but 
off the rebound, Williams. It's been all Brian Williams on that interior today for Arizona. Career He's high, 32 points for Williams. He's been their star, has not taken a bad shot yet. There's that motion game, getting a little movement. Slide inside, dump it to McClay. Out of missed him. Just past two and a half minutes. Owens dancing a little. And there's a foul. And that's going to be Matkins and Goodnight Gerald. He's gone. And that really hurts this team, both defensively and also his ball handling skills. He rotated to play the point. He deserves one heck of an ovation. Remember, we're looking at a guy with a, had a fractured pelvis, four pins, a plate in his pelvis. What a gutty, gutty performer. Replacing Gerald Matkins. Matt Offit comes back, shakes his hand. Mitchell Butler, who is a star of the future for the Bruins, who has already had a pretty good season this year and made an enormous couple of plays in the second half in this game. 92-90, Arizona, and Muehlbach for the one plus one. Muehlbach had a big game against UCLA in game one. He hit five for five for a three-point range. Now it's a three-point lead at 2.21 to play in the ball overtime. It also looks like a president of a bank sitting there determining whether or not he's going to give you that loan. Very calm, very poised. Hit them both. It's tough, though, when you're sitting up on top by half a game to come to Los Angeles and have to play the Trojans and Bruins on the same trip. Well, especially the way the Trojans are playing now. They're a much improved team. George Ravelin's done a heck of a job this year. Tracy Murray. Three points. That's the option you want. The previous possession with Keith Owens taking it one-on-one. He's their fifth option. Right there, they go to option number two. Find there in that little corner. You can see it ticking away. 94, 92, Arizona. In the rooks. Back to Mills. Mills gets it up and in. Nice smooth move Mills. by Mills. What he did well there when he entered the ball to the post and the defense turned, he went to the opposite way. Derek Martin throws it up and in. 96, 94. Nice quick move by Martin. Ultra quick little guard. We are in overtime. I would try to have Mills post up on Murray and take advantage of the fact that Murray can't guard you with those four fouls. Mills is playing on a perimeter away from the basket, so he just can stand guarding him. They so just call to play. They're going to a little four corners of town. They're going to spread the court. Spread the court. Use the clock. Discipline. It's good, and a foul on Owen. That's just a great play. Shows his headiness, thinking right now he knows that Murray's got four. He catches the ball one-on-one, -on -one, drives to the goal. Murray doesn't get any help at all. A little isolation. Now watch Mills. He's going to give it off. He's going to say, it's your ball. Now take it, little quarterback. Now I'm going to slide. You're going to reverse it to me. And now I'm going to take this guy one-on-one. -on -one. See, Murray, you got four. You can't guard me. Nobody well, he lets him go. They sacrifice Owens in a way, but Keith Owens is also fouled out. 45 seconds remaining in overtime. Arizona 98, UCLA 94. Right now, you sit Rooks down. Mills on the line. You put Womack in. Quicker, good defender, and Mills makes it a three-point play. Two possessions. lead. Two possessions with the three-point shot. Murray's the three-point shooter. Mills has got a match up on a perimeter. Ball is stolen by Womack. That's why he's in the game. And a foul. Owens. Owens uh, had not fouled out. We were wrong on our foul count. Foul now he's number 25, Keith Owens, his fifth committed foul. his fifth foul. Free throw shooting now becomes really, really big. He makes these. It makes life really miserable for the Bruins. But here again is a simple little thing, but it, it, it defines coaching, Dick. Management of people. They put in Womack for a purpose. He stole the ball. Well, Womack's been a solid player, one of his steady players all year long, along with Muehlbach, 
Mills has not been the consistent player. Last year, they had missed the consistency, as Owens found out, in Judd Bushler. Judd Bushler was one of those players that wasn't a star, but he gave Lou and his staff a steady performance every day. Rodney Zimmerman checks into the game, 6'9", freshman from Colorado Springs, Colorado. He's a quick player, good shot blocking ability. He's a very, very finesse kind of player as opposed to a power player. Sean Rooks is on the bench. Matt Othick. Arizona's been pretty good on the foul line, here, especially in the late going here. Well, Othick and Muehlbach are excellent free throw shooters. Derek Martin hustles it up for the Bruins. Less than a half minute to go. Seven-point lead for Arizona. Out of the corner, Murray Whoa. won't go. Womack a rebound. Arizona doing an excellent job defensively on the perimeter. <laughs> There's a foul on Murray. That's his fifth. Good gesture by Tracy picking him up. And he had to, somebody had to make the foul. Butler had missed, so Murray did it. What would have happened if there was no technical? Would we be in an overtime? Again, we're talking about a technical committed by Don McLean for throwing the ball. Jimmy Herrick had to be upset with his guy, throwing the ball at Brian Williams in a crucial, crucial situation. It was worth one point. It was probably a momentum switcher. Well, you go to overtime, take that point away. You don't have to be a yeah. mathematic right. genius to there figure it out. Yep. But even the ebb and flow of a close contest. Don't want to mess with it. Muehlbach, certainly Othic on the free throw line. Very, very effective. Arizona now is going to be 8-3. and three. Nail them the trophy. Yep. Sorry, Washington State. Kelvin Sampson, you've done a great, great job. But that championship will fly again in Tucson, Arizona. Schedule as much as anything dictates it because Arizona's only road trip will be to the state of Oregon. Foul there on Tarver. UCLA, on the other hand, Chris Mills at the buzzer to send it to OT. You may be in a circumstance where as much as uh, four teams are possibility. Well, I think so, without a doubt. With the Pac-10. I think they got three locked already, unless Arizona State collapses with their outer conference wins, and you're looking at these two clubs. Southern Cal gets hot, they can get in. The game is over. Arizona 105, UCLA 94. Everything a college basketball game can be. It was really exciting, Keith. It had all the electricity, the excitement, the enthusiasm, and the spirit. Great being with you. Hey, ABC World News Sunday coming up immediately after this game on most of these ABC stations. ABC's College Basketball. Brought to you by BASF, the spirit of innovation. By Castro, the motor oil engineered for today's smaller car. By AT&T, the right choice. And by Foot Locker, America's most complete athletic footwear store, where it all begins.